<laughs> What's the problem? We don't really know. We don't really know if we're live. This or is not. what happens uh, when I'm on this side. We're live, but we're not really for sure. What up, Abilene? How's everybody doing this morning? Uh, this evening, we're trying to see if we're actually going live. Yeah, I, and I've had nothing click up, so we don't know yet. We don't. I hope we're live. Yeah, I hope so. What if we are? What if we are live? What if this is all real? Oh my! Oof! This is frightening. Yep. I'm gonna go home. Are we? Are we? Are we up? Are we going? Are we good? Somebody send JB a text or Adam, letting us know. Yeah, let us. Let, yeah, text us. I don't know. We're good. Are we live? We're up. We're, we're good. We. Uh, how we've long been, has this been, been going on? For ten minutes. We're not a hundred percent sure if we're still live or not. They're saying we are. I don't know. Are we live, JB? Sure. We don't know if we're live or not. I don't um, know. I know Jesus loves me, so and he loves Jesus you, too. Jesus loves me. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. All right, so they're saying we're good. Yeah. Come on now. Everybody dance now. Not well, there. Good news. We've been live. I need to refresh mine because mine's not. Cool. We're going to start yeah. over. Are you we, ready? Are we? All right, here can, we go. Can we in, act in like we three, did? Two. two one. We're supposed to do it this way. Hold on. Hold on. It's ready. <laughs> Set, go. In five, four. <laughs> What's up, Abilene? It's your boy, JB, up in the crib. How are you, Pastor Adam? I'm doing well today. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> I like how not a single person texted yeah, us to let us yeah, know that we were live. We were live or not. Yeah, it's but right. it's cool. Nothing yeah. like a little 10 yeah. minute no, midweek meal. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's the keto diet. Yeah. You just you think you're eating yeah. everything you like, no. but you realize there is more it's to life good. than steak. Look, we're frozen. No, no, we're unfrozen. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, look. Look, look at there's. Look, who is this? Oh, that's my wife. It's good. It's good to know. <laughs> I like how your audio's on, and I can yeah. hear my sick, yeah. <laughs> my sick beatbox. Come on now. So, what have you been up to this week, Pastor Adam? Oh, what have I been up to this week? Doing some small projects here. So, and there. one quick question: Just Did one? you do it, or did your wife make that table? So, I have pictures out there of her cutting, okay, and sanding and painting, and that's what yeah. I thought. So, that's what I thought. You let her cut a piece of wood. She uh, cut all the pieces for it. <laughs> nice. She did. Uh, project out there. Hey, Carrie. Uh, she cut all the pieces for it. Uh, kind of helped her put it all together. Yeah. Uh, she stained it. She painted it. Nice. Yeah, sanded it. Uh, yeah, so. So, so basically what I hear you saying is she did everything that I wouldn't have the ability to do. Uh, yes. Nice. Yep. Nice, nice, yep. nice. Thanks well, for turning that off. Yeah, you're welcome. At least this is the that. truth. David. What's up, David? How are you tonight? Sorry. This is what's going to happen all yeah, night long. this is exactly what's uh, going to happen all night. So you want to do this so you can see yourself? No, I don't need to see myself, dude. I looked in the mirror before I got here. I know. That's what I was, that's what I was meaning. It's Look. amazing. So anyways, we're, <laughs> we're glad you guys have uh, Thank you for showing up tonight. <laughs> made the decision to tune in. Uh, did, Pastor you, Adam, did, did I'm just going to sit here. Did you just taking time? I did. Oh, okay. I missed it. That's cool. Yeah. Sorry. That's cool. What's yeah, going it's on? It's all good. So, wh what's on your heart? What's going on, man? Let's, let's, awesome Easter service. Man, wait, ain't nobody tuned in yet. Worship was sick and legit. Worship was like they were on we fire. We have seven people. We have seven people. Okay. That's twice as much as you normally have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, six. Uh, well, it's yeah, over now. It yeah. <laughs> JB started talking. You're getting off. <laughs> so, uh, up, Taylor? we had an awesome Easter service. You oh, want to kind of talk about that a little bit? We had a great Easter service. Uh, like you were saying, the worship, uh, Kirk and Monique and Danny, they just, man, they killed it. It yeah. was just, the anointing was just like, I didn't even want to get to preach. You know what I mean? They were just, they were going, and it was awesome. So, had a great time. Um, I, you know, it, it was very challenging for me this year, obviously. Uh, very challenging with uh, you guys not here, you know. Um, a lot of times for a church, you want to see how many you can pack in on Easter. Yeah, 100%. Because you, know I mean? you like seeing the people. You like seeing them, but... Uh, very challenging, but we're glad you guys tuned in. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, just kind of shared from my heart. Yep. You know? Yeah. Okay. Here in Texas, we're rednecks. In Arkansas, you're... High-class rednecks because we're just rednecks down there. Yeah, that's that's what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. Hey, Hope! <laughs> so, uh, anyways, go so right ahead. Back to continue. Easter. What yeah. were we talking about? You, Easter. Uh, we were talking about Easter. Yeah. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, like I said, just sharing from my heart on Easter, on uh, about Jesus the last week that he walked upon the earth. 
and uh, had a good time. You know, I enjoyed. Yeah. And um, you know, we're able to you do guys, communion. You guys enjoyed. Yes, we did communion. Yeah, and, so uh, that was that was definitely awesome uh, being able to have communion, and it was kind of odd because you had some of us come up or everybody. Yeah, was, and you didn't even get in the picture. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda yeah. kind of slid in part way, and then you just you just kind of stayed around the yep. outskirts. N- definitely you know? not. <laughs> yet. Alan, we already acknowledged you, buddy. Look hey, at Alan, him. what's up, buddy? Hey, I'm here too. I'm here too. <laughs> what's up, Lube? So uh, we we're glad every one of you guys decided to tune in today, and we've been doing this midweek meal. I guess this is the third week. Is or fourth? fourth, third or fourth? fourth I think maybe? it's our fourth week. Uh, that we'll, we we'll just say fourth week. Yeah, why not? We'll just say fourth. Not why not? So yeah. we've had a we'll good go good later. opportunity uh, to share with you guys. It's an odd time, that's for sure. It is a very odd and time. Uh, definitely not what uh, we expected. And I can think, you know, back to the first of the year. You know, we have staff meeting, and and so sitting in there, this was not on the agenda. This was for no 2020. On so uh, this was not on the agenda. But what that, do you do when a pandemic hit? Yeah. This. This is what you do. Yeah, this is what you do. Uh, and so it's kind of funny, even at my job, you know, different dealerships are doing things different ways. Yeah. And one of the things we said is they're like, well, is that legal? Is that right? And I just looked and said, no one knows. No we've, one, never yeah, we've never done this before. Uh, so all we could do is the best that we could yeah. do with what we have. Uh, and, you know, we've just been fortunate enough that you guys have been faithful. Uh, I know some relief came to a lot of families uh, today in the yes. form of a stimulus, which is awesome uh, to yes. help some people out. Uh, to be able to uh, to kind of get through this trying time, so yes, yeah. it's it's a it's a good time uh, for people. I think there's some unity that's going to occur, uh, which is exciting. Yeah, I you do know? too. You know, it's it, man, this is we've never been through this. Yeah, you know, every pastor across America has never pastored through a pandemic. You know, we've never all had to go online all at once. Yeah. You know, you can choose. <laughs> you, you definitely have your choice of services now. 100%. Online. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you don't like this one, go to the next one. You yeah. Know? Uh, but it's it's something that everybody's trying to figure out and everybody is trying to work their way through. And, you know, for us, you know, we're, we're a smaller church, smaller budget. Yeah. But I think we've done good with what we've had. You know, we've bought, bought a little bit of equipment and stuff and, and uh, able to get a, a better quality yeah. out there. Uh, you know, one thing that I, I have done or not done um, during this time is I have not shaved since we've been in quarantine. Nice. I've not trimmed at all. Ryan, I'm trying to catch with you. Uh, you Good know, luck. and uh, I'm going to see. We'll see where it goes. We'll see how much, you know, how long it gets. You do you know? notice I'm trying and, to do like a whole, uh, yeah, see what it can I do? I see the patches. You see, it looks like I have mange. Yeah, it does. It it's does. cool. Uh, you know, but I'm, I'm trying good. to see what ends up happening. Y'all can't see what I can see, but yeah. it, it does. It's, it's, it's got uh, a little bit here and here and here in, and there. In their, yeah. your defense, you can't see barely even because I can't grow facial hair very well. But I'm, I'm trying. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Nothing, man. <laughs> it's great. Everyone loves my mange. It's cool. Mm. And I even have a little spot right here. So when my wife wants to kiss me on the cheek, there's like a whole, <laughs> yeah, a whole circle. There. Yeah. Yeah. The size yeah. of a half dollar of no hair. <laughs> uh, so other than my head, uh, which is also cool. Uh, but we are, we are definitely doing everything that we can. Never trust a slick face. That's yes. right. And I'm not slick. Anyways, uh, make a long <laughs> story short. Uh, we, we <laughs> We, uh, it, you know, I was thinking about this with some of the equipment that we purchased and some different things during this time. We've always, uh, I've always complimented you on this and your leadership of being faithful with what God has given you. Uh, and so for a long time, you know, we did amazing <laughs> things with very little. I don't know how very else to little. say it. We uh, still do. We still do yeah, a lot. Yeah, 100%. Yes, and absolutely. so I can even think, you know, we had a donated sound system we did with our kids and yes. we were able to upgrade that with the offering we took in, different things uh, yeah. that we were able to uh, slowly progress to. And so the cool thing about it with this is this is something that was on the table for a long time, uh, the piece of equipment that we yes. purchased. Yes. And, you know, we were faithful and we didn't and we didn't. Well, we had to. Uh, yeah, it got, so it got to it a was, point like yeah. Uh, you know, our, our live streams at the very beginning, if you go back three, four weeks ago, uh, yeah, they were rough. very fuzzy, very rough, sound was bad, uh, and we just we, we it just bit the bullet and went yeah. ahead and purchased, and I think it was probably one of the best purchases that we yeah, made. Yeah, definitely. It's so. progressed us and challenged us yes. uh, and pushed us. You know, a lot of people don't realize, but Pastor Adam... Not only does he run the cabinet shop, but he also is the, the full-time pastor here, him and his, his wife, Farah. Um, and so they've got a lot going on, a lot of different things. And I love you, but technology is not one of your <laughs> your great, great suits in this world. But you have really challenged yourself during this time to reach out and kind of progress in that. And so you guys just need to know, man, everybody's stretched to Connect Church. Yes. But the great thing about being stretched is at least we get the opportunity to grow. 
Uh, and through this process, I've seen Pastor Adam, his wife, Farrah, grow. I mean, how many of us can just say how awesome uh, Pastor Farrah did when she got up uh, and uh, and she was able to share? Man, she Ooh, yes. knocked it out of the park, baby. Uh, but that was a stretch for her. That was. You know, that was her being stretched. And so it's just been awesome to watch the stretching and the growth that's occurring. Uh, even, you know, Junior just tuned in. And, you know, I know Junior, he's, you know, just chomping at the bit to be able to JBJ, share with baby. the youth and be able to go in and do that. But, he's you know, he's at a time right now where, where he's working full time as well. Yes. And yep. him and his wife are both considered essential. So they got a lot of stuff on their plate. But, man, they are, they're just killing it, sending I text messages. Everybody in America right now wants to be essential. A hundred percent. I feel <laughs> blessed know? every day. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, as far as us, I mean, we have a cabinet shop, you know, so we, uh, when we have work, we, we've got to be there to do it. But I know a lot of you guys, yeah. and that's something that God laid on my heart tonight. Well, let's uh, lead into that. Go so, ahead. Yeah, well, thank you. That's where I was going. Appreciate the uh, yeah, help. See there. how I set you up? Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, so, you know, something I was, uh, when I was taking a shower um, before we came up here, I really, yeah, I don't stink. Don't even act No, like it, it was just your yeah. weekly shower. Yeah, I was, was happy. It was my weekly shower, uh, Wednesday night shower. Okay. <laughs> you smell good. Oh, thank you. Good job, bud. Uh, you know, I really I heard, heard the Lord say that, you know, uh, his financial plans uh, don't depend on the world's financial plans. Come on now. And that's a big thing for a lot of people. You know, we, we, we look at the economy and where it's at right now, and we think that because of the way the economy is, that, that our income or our financial deal, and that's what it relies on, and it doesn't. Yep. You know, it relies on what God says. And, you know, and, and I just think about, you know, I think about Kirk, and he gave this testimony uh, two weeks ago. But, you know, Kirk, uh, obviously music, mm -hmm. you know, and, and training as far as, you know, uh, workouts and things, um, that was, that's how he made his money. And, and all that shut down. Yep. I mean, they shut down all the gyms. Obviously, if there's not any gatherings, there's, nobody's going to play music at him. He could go stand out in the middle, I guess, and, and play. But uh, it's still one of those things. But, you know, God supplied for him. Yeah. And, you know, he's, he's had a friend call him and say, hey, I've got plenty of work. Do you want to come work? Been doing that. Had, um, you know, some blessings come in from other places. And so, you know, his his financial blessings and his financial plan didn't come from the world. It came from God. 100%. Because when all, all of his income was completely shut off, now what do you do? You know, you trust in God. And so got a couple of scriptures here that I want to go to, some things that God had laid on my heart. Um, Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. Um, this is probably this for me and um, the way that I've done finances and the way that I have believed God um, over the years is um, this scripture right here is, is, is number one for me. And it says, blessed is a man. Psalms what verse? One, just start in verse start one. Start in verse one? Yeah, okay. just going to start in verse one. It says, blessed is a man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And that's a, that's a big key right there. Okay. That's a big key to, to what you do is your delight has to be in God. Everything you do, you know, it, the Bible says to seek God with all of your heart. And you can't, you can't go half-heartedly. Hard, you, can't, you can't just jump in and just be like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this part way. But I'm still going to reach over here. You just got to dive in. And so delight, um, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law does he meditate day and night. So what he's saying there is he's saying, listen, guys, what I'm doing, my delight comes from God. He said, and this is a blessed man. This is somebody that is blessed by God. My delight is in, is in his law, and I think about it all the time. Day and night. You know, I don't, I don't ever get away from it. Yeah. And so I think, about, I think about this word day and night. And this, this verse 3 is a verse that for years I have stood on for, for my business. It says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall, shall prosper. So there's a few keys in here. Obviously, we pointed one out in verse 2. You've got to delight in God. Second thing you've got to do is you've got to go wholeheartedly. You've got to just, you know what, in this time, and you're like, man, my hours are being cut, things are backing off, economy's bad. Um, so, so why not just go all in with God? Yeah. 
Why not just? I lose. mean, I mean, it's <laughs> everything to gain. Everything else is gone. You know, it's it's and and he's not he's not going to be like, oh, it was too late for you to dive in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you waited till the economy crashed. What'd you do that for? You know what I mean? He's not going to do that. And so he says, you know, delight in me, meditate day and night. Get it in your heart. Meditate. Get this coming through. And he says, he says, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, meaning you are soaking up what's coming from God. You know that river that's flowing from the throne room of God? You're soaking it up. Your roots are deep into it. You are planted in the word of God. And it says that you will be like a tree, right? It says you're going to bear fruit in your season. Your leaves shall not wither. And I love that because, you know, we think of leaves that, that come and go, right? Yeah. But it says, no, you know what? You're going to prosper all the time. And it says, whatever you put your hand to shall prosper. So if you, you're doing these steps, right, you're going through these things, whatever you put your hand to is going to prosper. And so during this time, man, you know, number one, you've got to put your hand to something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it may be, you know, Malachi chapter 3 talks about um, the windows of heaven that are opened mm-hmm. up, right? And those windows that he opens up are opportunities. You know, I remember when, when Fair and I, um, when we were young and, and, you know, starting to learn Scripture and starting to get into it and, and didn't hardly know anything, but, but all I knew how to do was work. Yeah. You know, I grew up on a dairy farm, and we worked from sunup to sundown. Um, it's just what we did. And so, uh, you know, when other opportunities came along, when, 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 you know, what I was doing for my main job wasn't making it, you know, I would have other opportunities come by. Yeah. Somebody come by, hey, you want to help me frame this house on the weekend when you're not working? Hey, you want to go pour some concrete, yeah. you know, this weekend? Different things like that. And, you know, hey, absolutely. You know what? I've been I'm looking for opportunities. Here it is. Yeah. And so don't just sit back and say, well, no, 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 that's okay. You know, God's going to supply. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah, he's trying to supply with that person that he's bringing to you for those opportunities. Big time. And so don't, don't, ever, don't ever shun an opportunity because then it could even lead to more. Yeah. You know, later on down the road. Well, and I can think of a time in my life I had just lost a job uh, and was in a tough spot. And a good friend of mine named Kurt Tunnel, he owns a construction company. And he had just opened this construction company. And I, you know this, man. I'm not a construction worker. Okay? <laughs> uh, just, just be real. It's not my gig. All right? But he said, man, I know you need some money. I need some help tearing down this stuff. Will you come out? And so I did. And it's actually kind of funny because, uh, you know, my heart was in the right place. And I was probably the worst ever <laughs> construction worker and this is tearing something down yeah. not even building something yeah, up, right and so uh and his son still reminds uh, me to this day i was out there man i was doing the best i could sweating like a pig in a slaughterhouse you know doing everything and i stepped on a nail and it was this old building and it was one of those big long what do they call them 16 penny yeah. inch nails yeah. or whatever and i stepped on that sucker and it went straight through my boot <laughs> into the bottom and i saw his son just a couple of years ago big six three now you know his little kid and he said man i've never seen someone bleed so bad <laughs> from some a little wound in the bottom of their foot you know but my heart was right man i needed the money yeah, let's absolutely. just be real absolutely uh, i still have absolutely. bills they didn't stop just my job did you know yeah. and so it progressed into that, you know, yeah. and my heart was in the right place. And I think that's something key too, man, your Absolutely. heart being Absolutely. in the right place. It, you know, the, 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 what it's talking about is someone who is delighting in the Lord, someone who is not wicked, someone who is in that, in that present side yes, of things, absolutely. man, and their heart is in the right place. Yes. You know, and I think that's a big key, a big key. It is, you know, and right now it's, it's so easy to let your heart get off. Because everything right now just seems to be so negative. Everything yeah. seems to be, um, you know, and, and even right now, it's just like, you know, with when are we going to get out of this? Yeah. When are they going to open the economy up? And, and is anybody going to have any money to buy yeah, anything when true. they open it yeah. up? I saw a guy that owns a business <laughs> post that today. Yeah, you know, and, and so it's like, what in the world is going on and when is this going to break free? And that'll be our, that'll be our thoughts if we're not in God. That's what I was just thinking. Yep. 100%. You know, that's, that's, that's putting our trust in an economy that's not God's economy. Yeah. Well, and at the, at the end of the day, I love my job. I've got a great job, but my job is not my provider. Mm-mm. God is my provider. Absolutely wonderful. You know, it is just that my job is an avenue God uses yes. to provide for me. Yes. It is not my existence. It is not God did not create me for that sole purpose. Trust me, God has created every one of us for something different and something yes. specific yes. directed directly towards us. I'm just glad that God uses where I work as an avenue to yep. be able to not only bless other people, but be able to provide for my family as a husband. 
that's one of those things. And, you know, I can remember when I first started in the field I'm in, coming home, bawling to my wife because I literally brought home a check for zero dollars and zero cents. And I remember I looked at my wife and I said, because it's commission sales yeah. and I got paid every two weeks. I didn't sell anything for two weeks. Yeah. And I remember I looked at my wife, Amanda, and I said, I promise this will never happen again. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't, I promise, because I was relying on me. It's because I know who my father is. Absolutely. You know, and though it was a tough time, trust me, her job got us through paying more bills than my job did for a lot of years. You know, but God used that faithfulness and relying on him, even when I wasn't doing what I needed to do every time. Yeah. I never doubted that he was still a good father. Amen. And he's proven to be faithful. Amen. A hundred percent. All the time. And so um, during this time, you know, we just, we just want to encourage you. We just want to encourage you to 100%. to just just dig into God more. Yeah. You know, whatever you're doing now, do more. If you're doing 15 minutes a day, do 30. Yeah. Doing 30, do 45. You know what I mean? Whatever. Just 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 do extra. Just do more. You know, seek him with everything you have. You know, seek and seek him first. Seek God first. You know, yeah. that's what the scripture says in Matthew. You know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things. Will and be all these things. What yeah. everything, you know, everything above that was all your needs. Yes. Everything that we have right now, all of our needs. Um, you know, and I think we found out that exactly what our needs are during this time. Big time. And what's not our needs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, know? we really don't need 380 <laughs> yeah. rolls of toilet paper. No. <laughs> Probably should have bought some ground beef. Just going out on a limb. <laughs> Uh, there's an app, by the way, if you need it. I don't remember what it's called, but Google toilet paper app. It'll tell you, based on your family, how many rolls of toilet paper you actually need. Amen. 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 Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. That's awesome. <laughs> so I want to go to another scripture. So if you've got your Bible, um, let's, let's just go. We're going to go a few, few chapters over. Yeah. We're going to stay in Psalms. Okay. Uh, we're going to go a few chapters over to Psalms 23. Once again, um, not 119. Thank yeah, you. not 119. We're not, we're not going to the big one. Uh, but we're going to go to Psalms, Psalms 23. And this is a big one. And I hope, I hope that we can bring out some good stuff out yeah. of this for everybody. Because, you know, here's the thing. And here's what we're doing. You know, the, the, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. Yeah. So if you're not getting the word, you're not growing in your faith. Mm -hmm. You can't pray for more faith. If you're like, God, I just need more faith. You should be hearing, just read more word. You yeah, know what I mean? 100%. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. So we're, we've, we've given you scriptures in Psalms 1. Now we're going to go to Psalms 23. We want to give you some more scripture. Um, so in Psalms 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yep. Mine says I have all that I need. I have all that I need. That's awesome. So if he is our shepherd, and you know, you think we have to be following him. Yeah. You know, because a shepherd doesn't 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 push the sheep from behind. The shepherd goes, and the sheep follow. One hundred percent. You know, and so if he's my shepherd, he says, "I shall not want." He said, "He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters." He said, "He restores my soul. He leads me on paths of righteousness for His name's sake, mm -hmm. not ours, not us." You know, we we what do we need? We need what He wants us. One hundred percent. Come on, we need what He has. It says, um, though, and this is, this is right here is where I want to get. Um, actually, down in verse 5, but it says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know, I think right now is a pretty big valley. Yeah, 100%. You know, and, and here's the thing that I want you to realize about a valley. You know, water's in the valley. Yes. Food is in a valley. Come on. When you get on that mountaintop, you're not going to find water on top of the mountaintop. And you're no. going to find food growing on top of the mountaintop. No. You're going to feel victorious and on top, but you've got to go through the valleys to build yourself back up to get to the mountaintop. 100%. Because if you're not going through the valleys and you're not getting stronger and you're not getting, getting what you need, then you can't climb that mountain yep. because you're not going to be nourished enough. The valleys is, is, is where we grow. The valley is where we get stronger. Without the valleys, the mountaintops wouldn't even Come exist. On. Well, and you grab your supply in the valleys to take to the top. Yeah. So that when you're up there, absolutely, you have energy. But You've you got gotta, the strength. You, but you, you got to go to the valley to yeah. get to the top. You can't just go mountaintop to mountaintop. Yeah. It won't, it won't well, sustain. Well, you know, it's kind of like a lottery winner. You ever thought about it? You know, there's tons of documentaries. I'm a documentary freak about people that win the lottery, and then in five, ten years, they're 100% broke. Well, yeah. it's because they didn't earn it. Right. It was given. 
Yeah. They didn't earn it through the tough struggle yes. and the grind and, and getting through. They were just given here. Yeah. Here's a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Let me just tell you, you give me a hundred million dollars, I'm gonna screw some stuff up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I need some good people in my life to help me stay where I need to be because I didn't earn it. I didn't go yeah. through the grind to Amen. get it. And as someone who comes from a poverty background in my life, I know what it was like when, yeah. when you went in the valley and you grabbed it and then all of a sudden you got a little further and you're like, Oh, there's more supply. Yeah. Oh, I've got all the supply. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you gorge it and you can't get to the top of the mountain. Yeah. You get about halfway Amen. and you slide back down. So Amen. anyways, I'm done. I got excited there for a second. Sorry. <laughs> well I hadn't know, gotten to use the word gorge <laughs> all week long. So that was that was refreshing. So but I liked it. It says though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, you're still moving. Come on. You're still moving. It says that I will fear no evil because there's a reason. Because he's with me. That's right. If God's not with you, then then yes, you should be fear. You should have fear right now. But if you're walking through a valley and you're leaning on God, then you shouldn't be fear right now. You shouldn't have fear in That's your right. life. It says that his rod and his staff, they comfort me. They protect me. Now, here's the big one. It says, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Think about that. What do you, what do you get at a table? Food. Food, right? Mm-hmm. And if I come up and I sit down at a table, right, I've got to turn my back to everything. Mm-hmm. Because my focus is not what's going on around me. My focus is what's at the table. In front of me. Mm-hmm. And what's at the table has been provided by God. That's good. So if my focus is on what's at the table, then I'm not worried about what's going on. It says, I, in the midst of my, my enemies. So my, my enemies are all around me. Everything that's happening all is around me. But I am sitting. I have a place of comfort. I have a place of supply. I have a place of nourishment built before me in the midst of everything that's With going everything on. With everything around me. All the chaos in the world. Everything, everything that's on. surrounding. When, when this COVID-19 is going on, everything else seems like it's crashing. Everything else is going on. I have nourishment. I have supply because I'm sitting at the table and I'm not focusing. Now, here's the other thing. Everything can be on the table in front of you. You still got to eat. 100%. He could have laid this table out here, could help you sit down, and you could be doing this the entire time. Yep. Your focus could be off of what's in front of you and on what's around you. Well, and then it comes to the trust side of things. 100%. Are you really trusting, like the verse above it that says, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me? Come on. Are you in that position where you find comfort in the protection of who yeah. he is? Are you trusting him? Yeah. Or are you trusting the things around you are you comfortable turning your back Absolutely. to the enemies around you why because you know yeah. that your father is there it's just like you were saying the, sh- the shepherd is ahead of you mm-hmm. well he's got the rod and he's got the staff Amen. and he's leading well when he's leading he's the first one that sees the wolf coming up he's the first one that sees the tr- troubles around yeah. Right. Well, what does he do? He protects you. Absolutely. 100%. With what some people view, which would be the rod as a disciplinary, painful thing. He's not using it for that. He's using it for protection. Yep. He's using it for guidance. But more Absolutely. importantly, he's using it, using it for comfort. Yes. 100%. So that when you are 100%. at the feast, you can trust that he's still yes. there protecting you. One hundred percent. You know, the second part of, of verse five, you know, the first part was he prepares a table before me in the midst of my enemies. It says, um, You've anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. In other words, there's a supply. And it's, it's a continual pouring into your cup. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord amen. forever. Amen, amen, You know, I love it at the, end, at the end of everything that David writes, right? It's always like, and, and I'm in the house of the Lord. I'm right there. Yeah. I'm not leaving God. I'm with God. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in these things. And so, you know, whatever's going on in your life and whatever's happening, um, right here it says, it says, surely goodness and mercy. You know, and I think about, I think about Moses when he went up on the mountain, okay? He left, he left everybody down and God said, come up on the mountain, right? Mm-hmm. And, and God etches, you know, the, the commandments, right? Mm-hmm. And Moses is just like, you know, God, I just, I just want to see you. I just want to see you, God. And he, and he puts, he says that he put him in the, in the cleft of the rock. I rod, love this part. Yep. Right. And he covered him with his hand. Right. Mm-hmm. And he walks by him. He says, you can't look on my face. He says, because there's too much. He says, anyone that looks on my face says they die. Yeah. Right. He says, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to put you in the cleft of my rock of the rock. I'm going to cover you with my hand. I'm going to walk by. I'm going to take my hand off. And, and what does he say? He says, I'm going to show you my goodness. Mm-hmm. You see, a, a lot of us just want to be up in front of God. 
But God says, all my goodness is behind me. He says, if you'll just follow behind me and you'll just walk right behind me and you'll let me do what I need to do. He said, that's where my goodness is. It says right here, it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Why is it following me? Because I'm following God. Yeah. And all of his goodness is behind him. And if we're, if we're trying to blaze the trail, God can't get in front of us. He's just Come like, on. I'm going to let you work and try to do it if you want to. Yeah. But if you'll just get behind me, that's where my goodness is. Yeah. And you'll just follow me. And so, you know, during these times, man, I just encourage you guys, follow God. 100%. I encourage you to dig in with God. I encourage you just to go, go wholeheartedly with him. Yep. You know, this is a time, this isn't a time to back up. This isn't a time to, to pull back. This isn't a time to give up. This isn't a time to, to, to do that. This is a time to dig in. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a time to make that trench, yep. you know, to draw that line in the sand and say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going there anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm staying on this side with God. Yep. So. And I know there's a lot of people, you know, at night, for instance, who are having a hard time. Uh, sleeping mm -hmm. because they've got the worry and the struggle. And I had to remind myself the other day that going to bed, listening to Fox News or MSNBC <laughs> or CNN, probably not the best decision no. in my life. No. Uh, and I heard a, a pastor say this. He said that the news is meant to just inform you. The yeah. news is not meant to be watched. Yes. And I started to think, I was like, man, that's a good point because I was getting consumed Yes. by the information and the overload of the bad. Yeah. And I started to think, I hadn't heard a really one good thing yet. <laughs> Imagine that. I hadn't, but, you know, one thing that my wife's been doing every single day is, you know, the, the news releases how many positive tests yes. that there's been of COVID-19 in Taylor County. One thing that Amanda has done is every single day she sends me a text message of how many negative tests that there were. Yeah. And she's told me that today, she said, I refuse to focus on how many positive tests there are. I want to focus on how many negative tests there are, how many people are not right. infected Absolutely. with COVID-19. And that, that man, that just encouraged me because my wife is blazing that trail of not looking at what the, the information, the negative information, yes. but yeah, she's well, choosing yeah. in a report that is intended to be negative yeah. to find the positive thing out of it and focus in on that. Yes. And it just tells me where her relationship with God is right now. Absolutely. Man, she's focused on the good, the good of the Father. Absolutely. You know, what he has to offer. Absolutely, 100%. And that's exciting. It is. It's you know, good. And, and, and in Malachi, you know, I just encourage you to go read Malachi 3. You know, because there's some things in there about, you know, and obviously it's talking about the tithe and it's talking about the giving because, again, God's financial plan isn't based on the world. Come on. You know, in the world right now, it's get all you can, can all you get, and sit on your can. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's exactly Don't right. Don't let anybody have any of it. You know what I mean? I got to have, sit on that toilet paper. You know yeah, what I got? I got to have my toilet paper. Yeah, I got to have more of this. You my know what Charmin I mean? throne. <laughs> no, come on now. I wish I could find some Charmin. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I got some 2,000 grit sandpaper. Uh, but, Sorry. you know, the <laughs> but what you have to do is you, you've got to put your focus on God. Come on. And you got to put your focus on him. And, uh, you know, don't let the things in the world right now, don't let those things keep you from focusing. Yep. What you focus on in your life will grow. 100%. If you focus on the negative or positive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, 100%. Depending on what you're looking at yeah. as far as the test, whichever you, you focus on is what's going to build in your life. That's right. So I just encourage you guys, you know, we're getting ready to wrap up here, but I encourage you guys that, as you're going through the rest of this week, you know, focus on these scriptures. You know, go, go read, go read what, what the Word says in, in Malachi chapter 3 because yeah. um, there's a lot of really good things in there that we can be doing. God's financial plan is not based on the world's financial plan. That's good. And, you know, and at this time, you know, we're, and, and you know, we, we've been blessed here, here lately and we've, we've been able to bless some people. That's good. You know, and, and I, I enjoy doing that. I've always enjoyed uh, blessing people, and that's that's really where my heart is. And so, you know, as a church, we're going to continue to bless people. We're going to continue to help the food banks in town. We're going to continue to help. If you need help, let us know. You know what I mean? Because there's there's part of you guys out there that need help, and we want to help you. And there's part of there's people out there right now that are watching that are like, you know, I've got more than enough. You know, help us supply for everybody. Come on, that's good. You know, there's a good balance there at this time. 
And there's people that are hurting, there's people that are blessed. And so we want to continue to give to God, and we want to continue to lean into well, him. Well, and when the so. uh, our wives and, and different uh, people in the church were going, uh, doing the Easter egg thing for the kids yeah. and, and doing that, there was a, a certain family that they're really going through something right now. Yeah. They're really struggling. Uh, and they made the comment. They said, I'm learning how to ask for help. Yeah. If you're that person, ask for help. Yes. Ask for help. We can, what do you always say? We can't do everything, but we, no, can, do we can do something. Allow people to be able to be a blessing. Let people do something. Yes. Man, because it is it is great when the Lord has blessed us and has given us the opportunity uh, to do certain things. Man, we, we got to operate in that gift. Yeah. And if we don't know that there's a need, it's hard to meet a need when you don't know. We're yeah. just out there guessing. Yeah, we just like, uh, you got something you need? No, yeah. I'm good. When really you're hurting. A hundred percent. You know, let us know. Let us know. Like I said, we, we, we can't meet all your bills, but maybe we can help you with something. Yeah. And we can definitely pray with you. And we can definitely find scripture with you for you to stand on and build your faith and, and just start believing God. That's one thing yeah. for sure that we can do. Yep. And, uh, we'll, but we definitely pray for you guys. We pray for you guys every and day. And like one of our church members just said, man, he just volunteered up uh, to help some yep. folks. So what we need you to do is you, we need you to get in contact with us so we know. So there's a few ways to do that. Yes. Okay. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do it is by email, mm -hmm. which is simple. It's Connect Church of Abilene at gmail.com. Once mm -hmm. again, that's Connect Church of Abilene at gmail.com. Or just go to our website I was just about and hit, to say. The, hit the contact. Exactly. Uh, or you can send us a Facebook message uh, via Messenger as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's several different ways, but we need to know, you know, and, and we can't do everything, but we yeah. can do something. And yep. we, we want to be able to be in that position. Yeah. Uh, so contact us. And if it's something we can't do, let's see if we can't help find you the resources mm -hmm. uh, that are out there and that are available. We've got a lot of different people that are in a lot of different fields yes. uh, that can do that uh, to be able to, to kind of help you guys. Because we don't want you to isolate yourselves and feel alone. Absolutely. You know, this is a time where nothing would make anybody happier than if you were following the shepherd and you were the sheep that strayed away 100%. and you wound up strayed. But let me tell you something. He will leave the 99 to come get you. No uh, and we want to be on. able to be a part of that to let you know that you are not alone. You do not have to deal with COVID-19 by yourself. You do not have to deal with your relationship at home by yourself. Man, you are not alone in this, but we have got to know that we yeah. can reach out to you because we yeah. want to reach out to you. Trust me. We want to to do that it's a desire to do yes, that it is but we, we can't play the guessing game you know we're not you know some kind of magic eight ball where we could just shake it and be like oh bob chester <laughs> oh yeah let's, Phil, let's go help oh, let's go help yes, we need to know so please yeah. enable us to have the ability to reach out and be uh the hands and feet of jesus and to reach yeah. out and let and you again, know and again on that on that same deal you know if if god's supplying for you right now and you have more than enough come on you know, help us out. Yeah. You know, go go to our website, hit give. Uh, we have Venmo um, at Connect Church of Abilene, and uh, and you can give that way. But you know, if, if God's giving you more right now, you know, uh, let's let's help help us help others. One hundred percent. Let's all do something so that we can help people. Yeah, and, and if we'll you all make it and it, yeah, exactly, and if and you know if you have the opportunity and, and you can give, you know, maybe an offering a little bit extra so that we can be a blessing. Yes, we, absolutely. Man, trust me, that's what we want to do with it. Yes. No, and nobody here, and no, nobody, no. I, you know, getting rich off this no. thing. It's our job to be able to help people, uh, and so we need the ability. And if you maybe even have a little extra food or something, and you say, "Man, I've got thirty-seven cans of pinto beans because I thought yeah. this thing was going south yeah. and you've got them and you know you're starting to get on the stable ground let us know what supplies <laughs> if you have something that you want to uh, be able to provide and let's see if we can't find somebody's hands to get that yeah, in, you know because we want to we want to do that that's that's a desire and that's I'll just be transparent I wasn't in church for nine and a half years and one of the things and the one of the biggest things that drew me to connect church was the heart of pastor Adam uh, and his wife Farah. I can remember we went to Chipotle eh, uh, I feel like you, even though it's a Spanish, I, I feel like that. I should always say it in a Scottish accent. Uh, and I remember sitting there and I looked at you and I said, listen, I don't want to get involved. I just want to be a pew sitter, you know, and you're like, that's fine. Just come. Just, you know, we just want you. We want you to know your love. We want. And that was the thing that drew me in was there wasn't this great expectation or some hocus pocus. It was a genuine love for God. Yeah. and a genuine love for people. And so we just want you to know that when you do connect with Connect Church of Abilene, <laughs> when you do connect with Connect Church of Abilene, we want to be able to, to reach out in the community and connect <laughs> with others uh, because we're connectors. Oh, this is awesome. Did you see how I did that? Go ahead. I'm done. That's it, man. I just wanted to see how many times I can say connect. That's all I got. Yeah. What else you got, Jamie? Connect. 
V connectors. <laughs> hey guys, we love you. Jesus loves you. We love you too. And it's like Pastor Adam always says, don't forget that you were created on purpose. Actually, I say you were born on purpose. You were born. (laughs) I had one job. I literally, I sat, I didn't have any scriptures. I had nothing. I had one job. One job. That's all right. Like Pastor Adam always says, (laughs) you were born on purpose. For a purpose. Thank you guys, man. We love you guys. Have a blessed week. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Connect churchofabilene.com, baby.